Apollo 17 is Gene Cernan's second trip to the moon. On Apollo 10, he flew a lander to within 47,000 feet of the lunar surface. This time, he's cleared to land. I needed to go back on Apollo 17. I wanted to cover the last 47,000 feet. I've been to the moon, folks. I'm not going back again not to land. And I think people knew that. You're looking real good, Jim. Right down the line. Over the next three days, Cernan and Schmidt spend more time walking on the moon than any other astronauts. I was strolling on the moon one day in, in a merry, merry, merry month of December. December. Now, May, 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 the month. May, that's right. May is the year of the month. A team of scientists monitors their work. Hey, there is orange soil. Well, don't move it till I see it. It's all over. Orange. Don't move it till I see it. I've stirred it up with my feet. Hey, it is. I can see it from here. It's okay, orange. Now, let's think about this analogy, but you know, they're up against the constraint anyway, so they got to leave at a certain time regardless of what we got. We'd like you to leave immediately. Okay. Three years after Neil Armstrong became the first man to walk on the moon, Gene Cernan prepares to be the last. When I crawled up the ladder, I knew I wasn't going to be coming this way again. And I just wanted to stop time. I wanted to freeze time. I want to take advantage of this moment. Okay, one minute, Houston. We're 50 seconds now, and we're go. Uh, here you're looking good here. It's only 11 years since Alan Shepard became the first American in space and John Kennedy challenged the U.S. to go to the moon. Now, Apollo 17 is the end of an era. It's like uh, breaking off a love affair. Uh, you've had a marvelous time, and, uh, but now it's time to bring that relationship to an end. Three, two, one... Cernan and Schmidt start the long journey home. The camera on the rover will transmit pictures back to Earth for another 27 hours. The final images from man's last trip to the moon. Having explored the lunar surface, NASA shifts gears to learn to live long term in space. You know, engineers want to do something different. So they said, hey, we've been there, we've done that, uh, and let's do something else. We proved to ourselves that we can go somewhere and survive. So now the next step is going to be a much bigger one. If we're ever going to go to Mars, we've got to understand what happens to humans in machinery when they spend a year or two in space.
NASA develops a radical new spacecraft using a Saturn V rocket left over from the scrubbed Apollo missions. It was a good use of the hardware we had to develop Skylab. It was a space station. The big insight was that you could use the third stage of the great big Saturn V rocket as a habitable place to live. Launching Skylab into orbit won't demand the rocket power that sent men to the moon. NASA converts the top of a Saturn V into the first American space station. The commander of Skylab's first crew is Pete Conrad, who flew two Gemini missions and Apollo 12. Rookie Paul Weitz is the pilot. And another rookie, Joseph Kerwin, is the science pilot. We could stuff it with experiments. We could put the food and water up there for three missions. We could do it all, and it was great. Skylab and crew will launch on separate rockets. This beautiful big Saturn V with the workshop on it was to launch on May 14th, and it would get into the correct orbit, and the next day we would launch. Not since Gemini 6 and 7 has NASA attempted two launches so close together. into the sky as far as we could see it and was on its way successfully. Pretty soon, the news from mission control began to get bad. There had been a G-shock and a sudden acceleration on the way up. They didn't know what caused it. Skylab space station now in orbit. Still some doubt in the minds of flight controllers here in mission control as to whether the main solar panels on the workshop have indeed deployed. One of them didn't respond at all. The other one, just a trickle of current that they could see. The planned 28-day mission is not possible without the workshop main solar panels. Meanwhile, the temperatures, both outside and inside of the workshop, began to rise. We have insufficient electrical power. We have temperatures that are out of control. It looks like the heat shield is gone. People in mission control were about ready to give, give up, I think. The second response five minutes later was, come on, we're engineers. Let's get to work on this thing and see what we can do. Skylab's biggest problem is heat from the sun. Engineers quickly design a giant parasol. They not only had to understand the problem, they then had to design the hardware, they had to build the hardware, they had to test the hardware, package it for flight, and get it to the spacecraft. After a 10-day delay, Kerwin, Conrad, and Weitz finally launch NASA's first repairman in space. T-minus seven, six, five, four, three, engine sequence start, two, one, zero, we have launch commit and we have liftoff. The clock is running and Skylab has cleared the tower. 